Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli, and you've heard the sayings from seed to salad, from farm to table, and you wonder, how does our artistic community get involved with something like that? I've got gotcha. you. Right here with me today, Erin McManus. She's one of the directors at Full Spectrum Farms in North Carolina. Hi, Erin. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Gina. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. I even wore my little strawberry shirt since we're going farm to table. <laughs> you might not be able to see it, though. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about Full Spectrum Farms. How did y'all start? So Full Spectrum Farms came about, gosh, in in uh, 20, 2002, wow. um, and it was founded by a group of parents and autism advocates um, that were just passionate about finding uh, long-term housing, finding alternative um, treatments for their children with autism. Really helping people on the spectrum thrive in the community that they live in, right? Yes, yeah, and they actually went to a conference um, in Raleigh at that time and learned a little bit about farming and horticultural therapy and came back um, to Cullowee with the idea that we could make that work here. And so describe some of the programs that you have, because I, I read on your website, which everybody can go to, by the way, but and we'll give you that information here in just a little bit, but uh, that you have programs for the kiddos, for youth and teens, and then for young adults. So explain to our listeners and our viewers all about them. Yeah, so this summer um, we will once again, I think it's our eighth consecutive year, um, with Southwestern Community College, uh, we partner with their occupational therapy assistance uh, students, and they come out to the farm and we throw an unbelievable one week summer camp um, for, for kids. Uh, this year it's gonna be K through five, um, but it varies from year to year depending on the needs of the students and the needs of our community. That's so much fun. I want to come. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. The, um, the students, you know, gain great benefit and great exposure, and so do our clients. And they get that one-on-one -on -one OT um, attention. And then we also will have um, our weekly, we do an adaptive gardening group with our fabulous garden manager, Carol West. Um, and folks can drop into that. That, uh, I think, once again, um, will be Mondays from 10 to noon. Um, on Wednesdays, that's our kind of jam-packed day. We do a, we call it Walking Wednesdays. We do like an exercise therapy group oh. that meets uh, in the morning on the Greenway, um, and we will walk the entire Greenway, no matter how long it takes us. <laughs> and sometimes we use um, therapy dogs, um, to join us on uh, on that activity. And we come back and we have an employment um, support program, and that is folks that will come in and they help with the garden mainly in the gardening season, but they also help with administrative assistant type work um, and cleaning and anything else that can help them gain employment skills to go out into the community. And so that would be mainly focused on teenagers and young adults? Teens and young adults, yes. And then we also, that afternoon, on Wednesday afternoons, we have another teen and adult program that kind of rolls right in from our employment group. And that is um, our ever popular art therapy class. Ooh. And that really yes. is our social hour um, and we make art <laughs> and we're so lucky this year Rotary Club of Silva has helped fund an instructor for that um, and I would honestly say one of our most popular all ages program that's going on right now is our pottery program full spectrum is known for their um, their strong pottery program and um, Christina Daniels is our magical uh, fabulous pottery instructor and she teaches one-on-one -on -one, um, hand and wheel pottery. Is this an opportunity after they get done making whatever they're making both in art and in pottery, um, is there an opportunity to possibly sell this to continue to fund the farm or continue to use that money as donations for wherever you need it? Yes, exactly. So we have, we used to sell at the farmer's market and, you know, COVID kind of changed that. So for our vegetables, we're doing, and flowers, we do direct sales right to area restaurants and 
um, and the community table. And um, for our artists, we will have their art um, at each of our events that we host for the community. Um, and every once in a while, we will do like an art show where our artists can be highlighted um, and show their work and sell their work. Um, many that of us got to make you feel good well, too. It's awesome. It's such a confidence booster for them um, to just be out and set up and, um, you know, really helps with the social skills uh, in terms of having to communicate with um, customers as they're selling their items too. So that makes us very proud when they can get out in the community and really be recognized as artists. When we get back with Erin McManus, the director of Full Spectrum Farms, we're going to find out about some other initiatives that Full Spectrum Farms has coming up. Stay with me. Hi, I'm Lear Gilmars. Thanks to our friends at Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. Sitting with me today, Erin McManus, one of the directors at Full Spectrum Farms. Erin, thanks again for coming on to tell us what's happening in North Carolina and some of the great programs and uh, different things that you're doing with the kiddos, the youth, and of course, the young adults. So let me ask you, some initiatives. I heard something like you drop into schools. What, what is that all about? Yeah, so we work um, with all different school districts we're available to work with, um, especially those in the far west or North Carolina region. Um, but specifically, we've been working with Jackson County Schools, and we like to, to push into their autism classrooms. Um, and most recently, we've done little events like our uh, trunk or treat uh, where we brought some like Halloween games and they got to parade around um, for myself and my staff. Um, and we also um, will do events like egg hunts or go in and just actually come in with a lesson plan, doing some sensory um, work, gardening or artwork. Yeah, because you can get those little clay pots and a seed or something and let the kids, you know, plant their first flower for Mother's Day or something like that. You can think ahead to a million different, you know, holidays oh, yeah. and things yeah. where you can do that. I love this. And you had mentioned, so the drop-in school happens with Jackson County, but you're open to go to all of the different school systems. Any other initiatives that kind of get people talking about Full Spectrum Farms and getting their kids and young adults there? Oh, yeah, definitely. We have a lot of what we call friend raisers, um, where we bring folks <laughs> out um, from the community. Um, our big one is um, our annual fundraiser. It's called Starlight Night. Uh, this year it's going to be on October 7th, as it, it usually is around that time of year. And we just do a big pig picking. We have bands come out. We're usually sponsored by different breweries. Um, and it's an event where we can really highlight the work that we're doing and get folks to the farm just to see the incredible space that we have there um, and so that they can find out about all the awesome things that we're doing and how to get more involved. To kind of backtrack, something that you first said when we came on, you had mentioned housing. Does Full Spectrum Farms have houses for autistic individuals on the property? Currently, we own a residence, um, but we are not doing residential um, programming any longer. Um, we don't have a license to operate that house, and so okay. we are focusing primarily on our day programs right now. Yeah, if you can ever get that back, because so many communities are popping up across the country, uh, from 29 acres down in Texas to right there in South Carolina, uh, the Unum Neurodevelopment Center is you know, building these on-site residential communities for, for folks on the spectrum who may need a little support, may need more support, or may need no support and kind of very independent. Yes, very much so. And we get calls every day look for folks looking for residential programming, especially those on farms, because um, I really believe that farm therapy and horticulture therapy is like the wave of the future. Do you have any uh, animals like horses, pigs, things that uh, the farmers need to feed? Yes, we have in the past. <laughs> so we, um, the animals that we've utilized in the past, we have had um, an equine therapy program and that's um, kind of my background and my passion is working um, with horses, um, with people of all abilities. And um, we have had, we 
keep chickens on site and we use our chickens really as as therapy um, and we have raised many flocks of chickens um, in my tenure there um, and that like we talked about um, when you and I first met what really helps um, establish some empathy and then also it's just animals require routine um, yes. and rules and um, that hits home with a lot of our clients so chickens need to be fed every day they need to be you know, have their water changed out, eggs need to be collected. Um, and so those rhythms, those natural rhythms that are instituted by the animals really are a great fit for people on the spectrum. I like the fact that you take and, and the people there growing the, from seed to salad or farm to table, that you're truly taking the chicken eggs, the strawberries, uh, the, whatever you're growing, fruits and vegetables, turning around and selling them to local businesses. I would imagine all of this is kind of organic. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not into pesticides, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's not only a great way of getting a skill set for folks, but then turning around and possibly eating it at the mom and pop diner that just bought mm -hmm. this great food. Yep. It, yes, it really helps us to come full circle. Um, and it also implements some of those like nutritional lessons that, that um, many of our clients benefit from. Um, we've had the opportunity to do some cooking classes with Uncomplicated Kitchen, um, and we can utilize items out of our, our garden for cooking. Um, with either with our clients or um, out in the community. We have in the past sold to um, specifically to the community table too um, because they had a great grant that um, helped support where they could purchase from our clients different vegetables. Um, and Miss Carol has been um, just the pioneer of working with community table and getting them the items that they may need and then they're able to feed under nourished populations here in Silva. They just did a huge event where if you paid $25 mm -hmm. you walked away with a piece of pottery and I would imagine that was from the young folks that come to Full Spectrum Farms and create it, right? From the day programs? It was not our pottery. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Hold on. We're going to back that up then. <laughs> who created who created that pottery? I don't know who created their pottery, but that is an awesome event. I love that <laughs> one in particular, and I'm pretty bummed that I miss it, <laughs> that I miss it this year. It's a great one. We're sitting with Erin McManus, the director over at Full Spectrum Farms in North Carolina, specifically Cullowee, the western part of North Carolina. When we get back, we're going to find out a little bit about, I know what you want to know, costs and involved with the programs and whatnot. Stay with me. I'm Lyra Gillenwater. Thanks for checking out this episode of Life with the Spectrum. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll always see the newest episodes when they come out. Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. Thanks again so much for being here. Aaron McManus, the director at Full Spectrum Farms. Now, I know with all of these programs, it can be very costly, what kind of costs can families expect to send their kid to the summer camp or to send their young adult to one of their day camps or that vocational academy that you mentioned? Well, Gina, we are very proud of the fact that um, until now, we've never had to um, charge for any of our activities or any what? of our programs. You're I know. Free? We are so graciously supported um, by many different organizations um, that that provide grant support. And then just we're adjacent to Western Carolina University, Southwestern Community College, and we can utilize um, all of their volunteer work that they're doing out in the community um, to help keep us afloat. And then we have wonderful donors and wonderful volunteers that just continually help us move forward. F-R-E-E is for me. And when you can send a young adult, because things get very expensive, right? Especially for the kiddos. And I mean, just a special needs summer camp can run you anywhere between $400 and $800 yes. uh, a week. 
So right. when you think free, even if it's for a couple hours, it's respite for mom and dad, and it's a skill set and something fun for the kiddos and young adults to do. With the Vocational Cat Academy, what is taught there outside of farming? So we have um, we have women this year, um, primarily. We, those individuals are coming to the farm and they are learning data entry, they're learning scanning. Uh, we're learning that together right now on our new scanner. Um, they help to do different cleaning activities, organizational skills, um, and they actually will help prep for um, other classes that we may have throughout the week. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. And then they can go on and possibly take these skill sets uh, outside. Because I would think, you know, like, I'm just trying to think of some bigger nurseries out there. Like Pike's Nursery is the first one that comes to mm -hmm. mind because they're all over here in Georgia. I mean, how awesome would it be for Pike's Nursery to not only give you guys a grant because y'all deserve it, maybe they already do, but then also to help grab some of your products, mm -hmm. right? And sell them in their nurseries or do other nurseries around the area also do that too for you? Well, we've been fortunate enough, we have had such a successful plant sale um, in previous years that really we are producing seedlings. Um, so that's what So True Seeds, who are just an awesome organization, they, pro they provide us with non-GMO organic seeds um, and we grow with organic means in our greenhouse with the help of um, each of our clients. Um, and then we will host, which we did last weekend, a huge plant sale. Um, and that brings in a lot of proceeds to help support the adaptive gardening program throughout the year. How big is Full Spectrum Farms? How many acres? Oh, we are like 34 acres. Whoa, so, that's crazy. It is. And we have probably one of the flattest, most beautiful pastures that that exists in Jackson County um, but yes we're 34 acres um, and we have on site we have um, a couple acres in our organic production um, we're producing hay uh, we have a three-story barn um, we have a pavilion that we built with the help of the Evergreen Foundation um, and then we have a little farmhouse that is our indoor space, our classroom or kitchen, um, and my office. And so how can people get in touch with you at Full Spectrum Farms? What, what, what's your website? They can check out uh, fullspectrumfarms.org. Um, and there that contact information for me will be listed and folks can reach out directly to me. Um, we also are, have social media going, and that's where we're posting a lot of our upcoming events um, and summer camps and programs that we'll have throughout the summer. I can say this, having been to Silva a couple of times now, and that's not too far uh, from Full Spectrum Farms, uh, it's a lovely mountain town uh, up there, and it's great because it's only about a two and a half hour, three hour drive from Atlanta, depending on traffic. And so if a family wanted to come up and vacation in a little cabin, but also have uh, something for their child to do, now really would be the time to get online and book a summer camp, right? Yes, it's true. There's something different. You yeah, know? yeah, that's a very good point. Um, we serve people really from all over the country. Um, and we also have some online programs um, that are that will be coming up this summer. We just got an awesome grant um, to do some neurodiversity life coaching uh, yeah. with Jane Coburn Life, and she's going to work with adults with ASD and then with parents um, uh, with children on the spectrum um, to help people just reach the goals that they want to achieve within their own world. And everybody wants to wake up with a purpose. And I think Full Spectrum Farms helping our younger children, our, our youth, our teenagers, and our young adults just thrive in this world and giving them a skill set that they can take with them and use at home, mm -hmm. building their own small garden in your yard space, and then or going on and working at a bigger nursery or staying right there at Full Spectrum Farms and donating their time working there as well. Erin, thank you so much for being on the show. 
Well, thank you, Gina, and thanks for letting us get on and highlight all the all the things that we're doing at Full Spectrum Farms. I mean, who doesn't want a salad, right? Nothing tastes better than a homegrown tomato. <laughs> and it sounds like our friends at Full Spectrum Farms are really making a difference by helping our ASD community thrive. From the young kiddos that can take advantage of their summer camps to the youth and teenage groups, the art and pottery sessions that they've going on, and the vocational academies for our young adults. And everything comes with a special skill set. Check them out at Full Spectrum Farms org and make sure if you and your family want a vacation pick one of those weeks off of their website and do it where your kids can go off to the farm and you get a little bit of a break to enjoy the beauty of north carolina's mountains truly truly gorgeous up there thanks so much for checking out life with the spectrum i'm gina and you know if there's somebody i need to be talking to make sure to comment below or send me a dm like comment and share with the show make sure you subscribe and let your friends know about it too we Although talk to a lot of people in Atlanta, uh, we know that our friends that are neurodiverse are far and wide in this world. And I'm willing to talk to everyone who's making a difference and making a positive change for our folks on the spectrum. So until next time, we live life with the spectrum. See ya. Bye.